All right, check it out. We got a review here of the hand mix streakers. I'm sure plenty of you guys are familiar with some of this stuff. Super popular online, and I've been eager to say the least to check these out. Hand mix was big in supporting, sending this stuff over, and uh, picking up the pack with a bunch of variety of what they have to offer. So let's run it through the paces and see what they got here. Looks like we got some literature to start and some stickers of course. Got the hand mix holographic there. Based on the packaging those probably are eggs by Latino immigrants. Coming out of Spain as well so very cool to see that. They're a kind of DIY company that's built off of some crazy uniqueness. So here's a little thank you Polaroid. That's fun. Got a few mixed up there. And you can actually see, I'll do some overlays of the process of them making them, but you can see a ton of different kind of split setups. I've even tried splitting markers myself. Worked out, you know, all right, but these guys definitely got it worked out flawlessly. Very excited to see what packs we got here. And on top of that, it seems like everybody that tries them out has good things to say, so I'm sure I will just follow suit with that as well. So it looks like we got some labeling that goes around the markers. Now they use Sakuras for the base of all these. And on this one, instead of twisting it out, you actually seemingly break it. So there's a few different sizes as well. This is that Fat King size over here on the right. Looks like we got some special editions, originals, and maybe some skinnies as well. So let's check out what colors we got here. Got a cool little red, yellow, and black combo. And obviously as you write with these, the split kind of changes color and if you just spin it as you go you get some really unique effects of you know, multiple colors coming down in the same tag so big fat king to start off very nice looks like we got one of the boxes to hold some markers in maybe repurpose this to put all my markers in now got this size pack too all right, let's dump these out give them a look so this looks like one of the skinny ones So for the skinny ones, we've got two colors on this one, just a white and black. And this one actually has the threaded actuation, so you can push the marker out with the threading rather than that first one. I think you actually have to break the edges of the marker down, but we'll get to that in the review. Another skinny with the yellow and red. Very sweet. I can't say I've ever even used a Sakura that's that small. Normally I go for this size. So you can see the top of the cap also labels what colors are going to be inside. So by uh, nature, you're going to end up with some mix and match of the exact cap. I'm sure they, at least one of the colors will align on these. But the silver one's cool. I'm not sure if the... Okay, so we got classic on this one, and then we got basic on the black label. Very cool. And these are, the ones I was making were super sketchy on how clean my lines are and I was really only mixing two or three colors. Here we got six different colors in this one, all different, slight close shade on that orange and red, but very nice. And the chrome marker body looks sweet. So these are obviously gonna work great on hard surfaces, rough surfaces, and they really wanted to stress the fact that you're kinda gonna wanna go with something that has a lot of high contrast. We see a lot of these colors are lighter on this one especially, so I've got some you know, darker surfaces to try those out on. Just cause when you get yellows and, and whites and whatnot in the marker, it might not show up so great on a, on a white surface as well. But here we got kind of black and yellow combo. That should be interesting. Oh, peppermint style. Not sure if these have names. So they do. So this is Nigerian. See, it's that guy there. Ooh, this is a sweet color. I think that one's going to be one of my favorites to start. Got the fluorescent pink, orange in there, and then the purple as well. And last up, a little pinwheel style. Let's see what this color is called. Looks like we got the Perennies here. That's a funny name. Very cool. So, we've got some variety to try out here. Let's uh, first test it out on some dark paper and see how they hold up. Alright, let's 
give this a try. And as always, feel free to leave your tag down in the comment section down below, and I'll hit it up in a future review. I think I'm digging through one of an old mop review video to pick up some uh, names here. So it looks like we have Type 1 from New York City. So you can see, we've got the variety of colors, as well as, as you kind of write with it, spinning the marker gives you that change that you see. So, let's do some more hit-ups. You can see, even though these are some of the darker colors in the mix, working great off the black surface. Kind of the slight roughness to it, so you're not going to get the perfectly smooth line, but the streaker likes to work how it does. So the paint sticks pretty soft actually, so if you really jam it in there, you're going to get some really bold lines, but here just light touch on the page, gonna keep everything pretty even as well as a little bit smoother of an application. You can see I lightened on my pressure here on the 72 and it got a little bit smoother compared to the, the Y where you can see a little bit spottier as it's pressing onto the page. So almost a similar color scheme here. Definitely the dark colors are showing up pretty heavily, so you can see the dark blue takes a little bit of priority there, and then the dark green as well. So that's interesting to see. Not as much of a kind of loud color with the lighter yellows and whatnot that are within there. Let's see if we got one that's a little bit on the whole level. This kind of has a lighter hue to it, but I'm sure we're gonna see most prominence out of that dark purple in there. That is a tight color. So we got subtle yellows and pinks flaring out there, stuck with most of that purple side. So let's see if we can get double up on that and take that as our priority. Got the black and yellow. This should be interesting on the black surface. Definitely could use maybe a white on there background instead, so we'll save that to try out. I've also got some other surfaces like metal and some bricks to try as well. So kind of unsurprisingly, the color is almost mixing together, so you get not super defined, you know, this is a white section, this is a green section. It's kind of a blend of the colors and gives it almost a nice kind of subtlety in the change between the two. So that's kind of unexpected. I don't quite remember that from my first run through on the ones I made, but hey, cool to see that this is working the way it is. So that's definitely working in its favor. I don't think I've been twisting it quite enough in these first few tags. So let's give a try on white and see how that works out too. Definitely looking nice on the white. I think the aluminum with the kind of dark gray feel to it is going to be perfect for all these. Let's hit up some more. So here you can see, just wanted to show the test that the white and black combo not going to really work well on a super light surface. You're not going to see enough of that white in the tag. So let's save the rest of this for that metal piece. Much bigger. You can see that this would also do well you know, with the mix of light contrast and dark contrast. This yellow kind of looks a little subtle on the white page. This one might be my favorite. Kind of got the full rainbow spectrum in there.
almost got a pink lemonade feel to this one. That's super tight. It's interesting with just the 50-50 split, you can basically, you know, get all of one color and then all of the other, which is a nice kind of unique piece to it. I don't think I have done a 50-50 split in a while. Definitely that full color rainbow one. Let's see what color this actually is. Really digging how that one looks like. So this looks like the special edition classic six. So definitely recommend that color. So picked up some aluminum sheeting so we can test this out on a crispy smooth surface as well as make sure that it has a little bit different contrast from just black and white. Let it grow. Pretty good contrast there. Nice variety. A little light on the orange pinkish color there, but some of those darker ones are looking great. Maybe I'll keep it kind of propped up so you can get a little better view as to what it actually looks like. So the white and black combo had a little trouble on both. Let's see how it works here. So in person the white looks great. You can see it's got the nice contrast off the gray. The black's pretty subtle. Not a great spin on that one. Mostly just white. So it's definitely e kind of tricky to keep when there's only the two splits, which color is going on which half. So it doesn't quite blend as much. I guess if you s rock maybe right on the seam, that might help. It's a little bit more mixed in there. You can see the colored ones do great on the kind of gray aluminum piece. I like that a lot. So even the slight unevenness of the stickers that were behind this gives it somewhat more of that rough shape to each of the strokes. So trying it just down here on some glass, we'll see how much smoother each tag is. Just that slight difference makes the tag that much smoother and consistent. You can see there's some kind of jumping and spotting here where it didn't quite get into a rib. Now, although these work great on rough surfaces, I definitely prefer working on a perfectly smooth surface. It's gonna make every tag that much smoother and crisper, and you're not gonna have any bumps or hiccups in the tag itself. It's gonna make it look a little bit smoother and cleaner on the page too. So you can see, I've got some stickers peeking through down there, and even doing the same kind of tag. You can see E gets a little bit spottier, you got some hiccups here in the I and the V. So altogether, if you can, smooth surface is going to make the tag look a little bit cleaner. So the last kind of alternate test I wanted to try out was a rough surface. Now the paint is obviously going to kind of get in there and get pulled off, so probably run through your marker a little bit quicker when using it on rough surfaces. But great versatility because you're not going to chew up a nib. So a little on the lighter side, let's try somewhat of a darker hue. See the black pulls through a little bit better. To having a little bit more pressure on the block itself seems to work pretty well.
definitely chews through the marker faster, but can get at least a solid line down there. So maybe a darker red kind of brick or something more asphalt oriented would give you the, the best contrast in here. The gray is still a little bit light for most of these colors. So overall, super impressed with the hand mixed markers. These are awesome use of the Sakuras and such an innovative way to actually start mass producing these because I showed in my uh, kind of tutorial where I tried these, it's not an easy task to actually get some even splits. And uh, picking these out online, you can definitely see they got plenty of different color selections to go for. My huge suggestion here is definitely focus on somewhat of a dark surface for these. A lot of these they work well with the contrast off a dark surface. None of them were super well suited for the white. Maybe some of the full kind of mixed ones were uh, the closest of that and I would say would also work for the lighter surfaces but really on a dark surface out in the wild these are all going to look crazy and give some real unique features to each of your tags making uh, everyone just stand out a little bit more from the next. It's also great to see that you know there's plenty of other colors to try out. This kind of orange and green one interests me quite a bit. We'll see some of the pinwheel ones were definitely my favorites, so even maybe some of the adjusted, uh, just slightly different versions of these ones with the five and six colors would also be great choices. I'll leave information on the description of the video so you can go check out Handmixed website. And they've got a ton of stuff also on their Instagram, so I'd highly recommend checking that out. It looks like they've been supporting quite a few different artists with sending them a few of these and getting them to make some pretty cool stuff with them. So definitely a huge thank you to Handmix for sending these my way and getting these onto the channel so we can get a proper review. So no need for me to hold on to every single one of these. Might as well pass a few along to you guys. So check out uh, my Instagram. I'll be uh, announcing it over there when I put this video all out to the public. So maybe pack a few of these up with some sticker submissions. Maybe pack a few up with uh, just a nice thank you for everybody that supporting the video. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you want me to hit up your name in a future video, also leave those down in the comment section and I'll be sure to feed through those and get those names tagged up as I do uh, more reviews and stuff here and there. Be sure to spray that like button if you enjoyed what you saw or maybe check out some of the other review videos I've put together for the channel. On that note, if you got another product that you want me to review, maybe go hit up that company or leave a comment and I'll go follow up and see if there's some interest in any specific products that I can get my hands on and run them through the works. That's going to do it for me guys. Peace.